Welcome to Green Mountain Hooked Rugs. I'm Stephanie. And welcome to the second of our series of beginning rug hooking videos. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the equipment that you need and some of the differences in equipment that you might see and also a little bit more about directional hooking. So we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about uh, how to pull loops. First, let's take a quick review of what we uh, saw from the first video. So this is the frame that we used in the first video. It's our basic frame and we use these uh, clamps to keep our backing on. But I wanted to mention that um, this is a great beginner frame. It sells for $35 and you get the binder clips with it. So it's a great place to start. If you want to upgrade just a bit, you can buy a set of these gripper strips. They are metal carding strips and they fit right on here on the edges of your basic frame and you can buy these separately whenever you're ready and then you can glue them on or use your staple gun um, and staple them down and you've just upgraded your frame um, you probably would never need anything else after that. So it's a good size, and this is a great, great way to upgrade your, um, your basic frame. <clears throat> okay, so in our first video, we were using uh, this type of hook. Okay. And you'll notice that it has uh, a fairly narrow shank and um, the handle is easily palmed or pencil hooked, pencil gripped. Uh, but I wanted to mention that there are lots of different hooks out on the market. This is another type of hook that we sell here in the shop. It's called um, a Miller hook, and you can see that it has beautiful wood, has a nice sheen to it, and it has uh, a very um, a, a hook that's quite similar to the previous hook that I showed you. All right, so it's very comfortable in the hand, very nice to hold. Okay, and here's another type of hook. Similar similar end, small hook end, but you'll notice that the hook uh, is more pencil shaped. Again, easy to hold on to. I would be remiss if I didn't show you the bent hook. So this is another type of hook um, that you might want to use um, to try and see if it'll feel comfortable for you. Same thing, you can palm it, pencil hold it, but because it's bent, you don't have the same motion with your hand or your wrist. So you might find that a little bit more comfortable. For today, I'm going to use um, what uh, I'm going to use a hook that has a thicker shank on it. Notice how thick that the shank of the hook is. This is called a Hartman hook. It has a little flat spot on the handle so that I could actually f put my thumb there, or if I'm pencil holding it, and I I I hold it, you know, all different ways, and that's that's fine. You'll you'll figure out the most comfortable way for yourself to hold on to it. But I like this thumb, uh, flat thumb space because it shows me which, where the hook end is pointing. So another reason that I'm going to be using this thicker shanked hook is because of the width of the strip that I'm going to show you today, that I'm going to use. So if you wanna just come right over here and take a look at these strips. So you'll notice that this is a very narrow strip. That's actually called a number four strip. And this is a number six, and this is a number eight. And the strips are called that because the machines that we use are actually calibrated in 30 seconds of an inch. So that's one type of uh, cutting machine that, that we use. So the, the um, cutting machines are calibrated in 30 seconds of an inch. So if you're talking to a rug hooker and they say, well, I'm, I'm hooking with a number four cut, what they mean is the strip that they're using is four 30 seconds of an inch wide. 
or if you want to do your math and reduce the fraction, 4 30 seconds is actually 1 8th of an inch. So that makes a little bit more sense. So as I said, we're going to use a hook with a thicker shank because today I'm going to be using the number 8 cut strip. And that, again, if you do your math and reduce the fraction, it's uh, 1 quarter of an inch thick or wide. All right, so let me get set up here. I'm going to use my um, basic frame that has gripper strips on it. So this is our Appleton frame, which is you'll find on our website. And uh, today I'm going to use bleached linen. That's generally my favorite backing. So years and years ago, people used to use burlap because that's what they had available to them. But uh, burlap really doesn't stand the test of time. And you'll find um, in the rug hooking world today, most people do not use burlap. I like the linen um, because it's very durable, and I like the bleached linen because I like to work with a lighter background. But also available in linen is a natural color linen, so it's a little bit darker than this. It actually looks a bit like burlap, but definitely much sturdier. There are two other backings that you might use. Um, uh, they both are cotton products. One is uh, called Rug Warp, and it has one cotton thread warp and weft, like that, and the other is monk's cloth. And if you see monk's cloth out and about, you might notice that it has white lines in it. So the white lines help uh, in keeping your design straight if you're actually um, creating your own design. So the difference between the rug warp and the um, monk's cloth is that the monk's cloth has two cotton threads, warp and weft, where the rug warp only has one cotton thread, warp and weft. Uh, everybody likes something different and um, I don't recommend one over the other. They're all good, good products and you just need to decide for yourself kind of what works and what's most comfortable for you. Okay, let's get down to it here. I'm going to take my number eight strip or quarter inch and my uh, hook again is going in my right hand on the top. My other hand is going underneath. I always begin by pulling up an end like this. And if you saw our first video on beginning rug hooking, you'll remember that uh, as I push the hook in, I'm feeling where it is underneath. <clears throat> you want to take a quick look underneath? And you can see my hook. And then I'm going to lay that strip <clears throat> over the hook end to pull a loop up to the top. So watch again. Here I come. Here's my hook. You see it? I can feel where it is with my left hand. I'm going to lay that strip over the hook end, pull a loop up to the top. Okay, come on back up again. <clears throat> so we've got our nice straight line going here, but what if your design has curves in it? How are you going to do that? You're going to put your hook in, and what I'm going to do is, is create a circle. So I'm going to go, I'm going to skip a hole and go down. And I'm going to come around like this. And you'll notice that my hook, my hook is perpendicular to the loop. So you can see there's the loop. There's the hook, and whichever way that a uh, hook is pointing is pretty much the way the loop is going to go when you pull it. So there I go. I'm going to pull another loop. Now it's getting a little awkward for me to hold my hand that way and pull the loop. <clears throat> I just want to remind you, too, that we talked before in the previous video about always pulling back toward the previous loop. So to do that, I would have to go kind of like this. That's a bit awkward. So I'm going to change the position of my hand. Wrap that strip underneath and pull this way. So you know, I'm exaggerating my movement just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Whoops, get in there. 
can see I'm still perpendicular to the loop. <clears throat> The other thing I want to mention as I'm hooking along here, I'm feeling with my left hand underneath um, how the strip is going on to the hook. So in other words, um, well, I'm going to grab this piece just to show you. I'm holding it between my thumb and my forefinger. So as I'm laying it onto the hook end, I can feel whether it's twisted or not. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. If I, if I put my strip on there and it comes up kind of twisted and bunched up, it's not going to lay as flat, as nice as these are. So I'm going to pull that back. And so as I'm pushing my hook in, I'm feeling where it's going on. That strip is going on to the hook end. And now I'm just about done. Get in there. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to clip this, uh, this end right now because I don't have any loops in and around there to support it. But this one, you can see all the loops that are around this end. So I always begin and end with my tails on top. And when I have enough loops around those tails, I can go back and clip it level. <clears throat> Okay, so that's a nice circle. I'm going to show you something else. You'll notice that um, in our first video, we were talking about um, right-handed people working right to left. So the opposite in which uh, you read. Um, if you're a left-handed person, you're going to start working the other way. So working from left to right. Because the natural motion to pull back toward that previous loop, my hand is going to go this way. You can see it's, that's, that's a natural motion for me to be pulling. If I'm left-handed, I'm going to be pulling this way, okay? Otherwise, I would have to be, it would be more of an awkward uh, movement. I'm not sure that makes sense exactly um, to you, but think about it for, for a bit. So the other thing um, I'm going to do at the moment, I'm going to work from the from up to down. So I'm headed this way. So I want to put my hook in, pull my loop up again, perpendicular to the loop. I'm going to keep going, just hooking in a straight line for right now. Now I think I'm going to go off this way. So you'll notice I'm going to pull back toward the previous loop. I want to work up this way. And I think I'll just come back down here. And I think I'm done. So I'm going to pull my end up. So you have to be careful sometimes when you're pulling your end up that you don't pull out that previous loop. So you might want to take your hand underneath and just hold where that previous loop is to pull up your end. <clears throat> now I'm going to clip this just so you can kind of see what I did. Here we go. Here, I'm going to turn this so you can see. So I made a little flower. Okay. So that's, um, that's the end of this session. Join us again for some more information at another time. Have a great day.